Welcome, to the Corp Vault channel. In this video we will discuss, how to deal with server performance, especially during backups. Please, like, share, comment or suggest. Subscribe for more videos, and, you can follow us on Instagram. In this video, we will discuss about server performance, and how to deal with it. The use case would be, either backup causing server performance, or server performance hindering backup performance. Before considering any one of these scenarios, it is first important to understand your environment, including the capabilities and limitations of the infrastructure, specifically, the ability to transfer large amounts of data of production, or backup networks. Network infrastructures are constantly changing, new servers are added, new databases are added, and so on. So, the infrastructure performance degrades, if the infrastructure is not upgraded accordingly. To check Windows Server Performance, open Task Manager. Processes tab. It lists the processes currently running on the server, along with their CPU, memory, process ID, and other information. This should help you with the process name, which is consuming more of system resources. Click on Performance tab. This would give you an overview on how the system is doing. For this video, we will discuss Comvault Backup Tool. But, what we are about to discuss is general, and might be applicable, to any other backup tool available in the market. Launch Comvault Process Manager. If you notice, even a little of activity spikes the CPU usage. Go to Services tab. Record the backup services, that are currently running on the server. Also, record the backup processes running on the server, using the Process tab. Do record the CPU and memory usage at this time. At the moment, backup is not running on the server. So, you are recording the normal CPU and memory usage, during non-backup window on a given server, which is reporting performance issues. Now stop Convault services. Record the CPU and memory usage, when no backup service, or process running. If you notice the CPU usage is below 30% max, with or without backup process, or services running. We are now clear about the server performance, when no backup is running. We do see spikes in CPU usage with little activity on the server. Just to let you know, each hardware component is going to have, a theoretical performance limit, and a practical one. Attempting to get improvement beyond these limits, without changing the resources involved is a waste of time. Let's repeat the same steps when the server is loaded. The server load as we see is variable sometimes higher and sometimes close to 50%. Note the percentage of server CPU, and memory utilization. Note down the Comvault services, and processes, that are running, along with their percentage of resource utilization. Stop Comvault services, and note the server CPU and memory utilization, when no backup process, or service running. You see the server resource utilization is high without any backup process or service running. Let's start backup for this server. As the server resource utilization is high, at this moment, if backup starts, then it will need some resources on the server, which could lead the server utilization to 100%, causing any running application to choke, or system to go unresponsive. On the server, check the process which is taking high amount of system resources, and note it down. On the Convault Process Manager, click on the Process tab. Note the process which is taking more system resources. In our example, we see the server is already overutilized, so adding little load by backup, might make the server more loaded. Also note, backup process might need more resources when the application on the server is database, or exchange, etc. In our example, 
the server need more resources to handle the load, like more CPU, or more RAM, or more I.O. There are some options in Convault, which you can check, or tune, to ensure backup is not putting load on the server. Let's check what they are. Right click on the sub client. Select properties. Sub client properties. Click advanced. Advanced sub client properties. Select performance tab. Number of data readers. Data readers are also called data streams. Disk IO is the most costly, time consuming portion of a data movement job. Using multiple data readers can improve performance, but in certain conditions, it can degrade performance. In our example, the server utilization is already high, so increasing number of data readers would not help. As per our example, keeping number of data readers to one, which is lowest would be good. This is until the server performance issues are fixed. Just to let you know, Convault's internal algorithms determine the maximum number of data readers that can read concurrently from a single physical drive. Too many data readers on a single physical drive can degrade performance. Normally, sub client content is divided between data readers based on physical drives. The first data reader reads from the first physical drive, the second data reader reads from the second physical drive, and so on. By default, only one data reader is allowed per physical drive, regardless of how many data readers are configured. Often, a data reader completes before the other data reader completes, which reduces the performance gain of using multiple data readers. Allow multiple readers within a drive or mount point. For the file system agent, the number of data readers value determines the number of parallel read operations from the data source. This option is useful if you have multiple physical drives. For example, if you have sub-client content that spans four physical drives, and you configure four data readers. Each physical drive gets one data readers. When one data reader completes its task, it assists another physical drive. This process continues until all data is read. This process maximizes the time that multiple data streams are moving data, which can improve performance. If your physical drives are already loaded, and their average queue length is high, then this option might not be beneficial. Network Agents Network agents are threads or processes, that transfer data to and from, the network transport layer. Each network agent spends half its time reading, and half its time writing. For higher speed networks, having multiple networks agents can improve performance. Default value is 2, and can be lowered to 1, or can be increased to 4. For our example, it can be lowered to 1, and then checked if it helps reduce the load. Application read size. The application read size, is the size of the application data that is read from the clients, during backup jobs. Values for the application read size must be in the power of 2, the minimum value is 64 KB, and the maximum value is 4 MB. Recommended value for NTFS application read size is 512 KB. When the size of the application data, that is read during backup jobs, matches the source application's internal buffer allocation, the overhead is minimized, and performance is improved. To achieve the optimal rate of data transfer during backup jobs, configure the application read size based on the source application's internal buffer allocation. You can increase the application read size, to reduce the amount of data that is read from the given application. Reducing the amount of data that is read, also reduces the number of I.O. jobs, that are performed against the application. As a result, overall backup performance might improve. However, backup memory usage might also increase, which might inadvertently consume additional resources from the application. These options need to be checked for all the configured sub-clients, to reduce the load on the server, as per our example. Do note, changing these values might reduce the load on the server, 
but might increase the backup run duration. In other words, backup might take longer time to complete, than usual. Let's get back to our server. In case if you see a particular process, consuming more system resources than expected, first open a support ticket with vendor, and for deep investigation, collect the process dump, by right clicking on respective process, and select dump process. To summarize, in our example, the server itself, has performance issues and backup might be just a contributing factor. Server performance issue has to be fixed first, by adding more resources to it, before conclude backup is the culprit. If you see a particular application is taking a lot of system resources, then the application owner need to ensure the server is not overloaded, or else, the application or the system would crash eventually. If indeed backup is the problem, then try the points we discussed to reduce the load, and do open a support ticket with the vendor for root cause analysis. We will end this video here. Subscribe to our channel for more videos, if not already done so. Do subscribe for more videos.